Let's just recap the ultimate high points that we've had so far and see what we just were talking about in our last discussion. First of all, if we take a look here, I've graphed once again the position uh, function from my bicycle trip. And I marked off the very time, square root of 6 over 2 hours, which is 1.22 something hours. That was the moment where I crossed the 20 mile an hour sign. OK? And what I'd like to do is I'd like to find the, the instantaneous velocity at that point. And let me tell you how we warmed up to that. The way we warmed up to that was first by saying, well, what I should do is I should just take a look at two points. And between those two points, I can find the average velocity using, of course, the fact that rate equals distance, a change in distance over change in time. OK, so that was great. And then we looked at the picture and said, well, wait a minute. Forget that fact. Just look at the picture. The slope of that line is identical to that number. And so voila, we immediately saw that the average rate is equal to the slope of the secant line, namely the line that touches the curve at two points, that goes through the curve at two points. So that was the first revelation, which I consider a major revelation, by the way. Look at that, a connection between slopes of lines and rates. That's pretty cool. OK? But then we said, now how do we get the instantaneous rate? Well, what we want to do is take that point and move it closer in. So what you want to do is you want to move that point closer in. And if you do that, you see what happens? We start to get, oops, we start to get closer and closer. And what inevitably happens? Inevitably what happens is we get a line that just grazes, just grazes the curve at that one point. And you'll notice, in fact, you have to look really close. I have a magnifying glass here for you to take a look at that. Look at that. That just grazes the curve at that one point. Doesn't touch anywhere else. That is called the tangent line. And what we just discovered was that the instantaneous rate, that very delicate thing that we were in search of throughout this entire course up to this point, turns out to equal the slope of that line. Look how close we are. How do we find the slope of that line? Well, since we only know that one point that the line contains, if I try to plug in the change in distance over change in time, we see that point minus itself, so we get the 0 over 0 problem. That was the problem, that was the conundrum that has haunted us, that has plagued us since the very beginning of this course. But now we're finally in the position to answer it, because now we're empowered with the mathematical notion of saying, instead of just plugging in the 0 over 0, let's take the limit as delta t approaches 0. So we're going to look at these average rates, the slopes of the secant lines, as we get closer and closer to that point. And as we get closer and closer to that point, notice the line approaches and then finally becomes the line that we seek. So the answer is now right in front of us. It's right in front of us, and we're ready to do it. So let's actually put on the final touches and actually figure out my instantaneous velocity. How do I do it? Well, the trick is to say, OK, I'm going to take this point, and I'm going to offset it. I'm going to look at this average rate. I'm going to look at this slope. This is the key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a point, and I'm going to pick a, a time, a t, that's very, very close to this. But I'm not going to tell you how close it is. I'm just going to tell you it's this plus a little bit. And so I'm going to write it right here. And I'm going to say it's just the square root of 6 over 2 plus a little change in time. And I'll call that, guess what? You guessed it, delta t. So this is just a little teeny bit that I add to take this and I add a little change. So this is just a little bit bigger than this. Now, for thinking purposes, you should think of the delta t as being really, really, really tiny. I just drew it enlarged to show detail. But in reality, you should think of those things as being really close together. If I drew them as close as I mean them to be, you would not see it as it travels over the information superhighway. So I'm just doing it right here, enlarged. If I go up to the function, that's where it crosses. If I find the average rate of change between those two points, that's the slope of this line, which we can do, which we can actually do. And let's actually figure that out. And remember, average rate equals the slope of the line. So let's actually figure that out right now. Well, what's the value of this point? That's the position at uh, the square root of 6 over 2 hours. Remember, by the way, here's our function, in case you want to recap. 
If you plug that in, you can plug it in and try it, or you could again remember where that road sign is located. It's located 20 miles from where I started. So in fact, that number is 20. Now I admit that doesn't look like it should be 20, but again, not drawn to scale. Everything is all skewed off here. Just look at the relativeness to everything. Don't worry about how close and far they are. So that's 20. Now where's this? Well, when time equals this, where am I located? I have to go up to here. What's the recipe? Now don't panic here. All we do is we plug into the machine that gives us position. Well, that's the P function. So all I do is take P and plug in that time. Now it's going to be sort of complicated to write that down, but it's not hard to understand. It's just P evaluated at that thing. So that's going to be P, I'm going to write it right here, evaluated at the square root of 6 over 2 plus delta T. That's that number. Sort of a complicated looking thing, but don't worry about how complicated looking it is. That's the number. And now, how do I find the, uh, the average rate between those two points? Remember, average rate is the slope of that line. And the slope of that line is not too hard to figure out. How do I figure out the slope of the line? I take that difference divided by that difference. It's just going to be the change in distance over the change in time. OK, so let's actually work that through now. I'm going to do nothing more than this. But I'm going to work it through with this particular function. Let's see what we get. Let's see exactly what this looks like. Well, what this looks like is, well, p of square root of 6 over 2 plus delta t minus 20. So that's the change in distance. And now I got to divide that by the change in time. And what's the change in time? Well, it's this number, and then I have to subtract that number. But notice what that is. These things cancel. I'm just left with delta t. Well, that makes sense, because that was the offset I went. That was the difference. So in fact, I put down a delta t here. So my rate equals change in distance over change in time. That's the slope of that line. And it turns out it equals that. And what do I want to do with that? Well, that is the average rate. But I don't want average rate. I want instantaneous rate. So how do I find the instantaneous rate? What do I have to do with that offset? 